What is up all of you Avatar The Last Airbender fans, Sokka has spoken. In a recent interview with Complex, actor Ian Owsley, who plays Sokka, sat down and discussed some of his thoughts about the changes to season one. And this article just came out, I found it really interesting, I think you guys will too, so that's what we're talking about today. But before we do, make sure you smash like and subscribe if you're new here. Because if you don't, honestly it might hurt my feelings and I might have to jet. You see what I did there? But Avatar The Last Airbender news and updates have kind of slowed down a bit since the release of the live action series on Netflix, but you guys know, obviously, if something comes out, I'm gonna talk about it. I also do wanna let you guys know that I've been thinking about doing a weekly live stream talking about Avatar The Last Airbender. So every week we get together, we talk about Avatar as well as some other stuff and just have a good time. Please let me know down in the comments what you think about that idea. I'd be way down to try something like that if that was something that you guys were excited about. So please let me know. But as I said, Ian Ousley recently sat down with Complex and there's a portion where he talks about how they approach the changes that were made to his character as well as just season one in general. There's so much much more than just this specific portion of the article, so I'm going to go through a bit more of it after this, but I wanted to start here. In the article, when he was asked, what are your cardinal rules for adapting an animated project into live action? He said this, I think that for one, I'll say that we love the animated show. All of us are fans of that, which is what we're trying to embody instead of emulate, is what I would say. A shot for shot remake of an animation, to me personally, is unnecessary. What we want is to give people a true and faithful adaptation of a show that people grew up on and still love today. That's what I would say to some critics. I hear you and we love the animated show and it exists and is perfect for a reason. I think that it's necessary to bring some differences to the show so that we can have some new content. You have to take risks and I think that we took some risks. Sometimes that really really pans out and sometimes it doesn't. I think that most of our risks really did. And I've talked a lot about this and it's really nice just to see it reinforced a bit. Just how much the cast and crew really cares about the original series. I also really like some of the other stuff that he's saying here and it echoes some of my thoughts from the jump personally I never wanted just like a straight one-to-one -one adaptation of the original series into live action I wanted something new and different that follows the same beats if you will and that's why while watching it for me the closer they got to the original the more I found myself distancing a bit the moments that shine for me the most were the moments that they decided to take risks and I don't know what you're expecting when it comes to Ian Ousley like making comments regarding this article regarding the changes he didn't address any any of the like quote unquote triggering stuff. Honestly, I'm happy that he didn't. I spoke a lot before the show came out while all of that was going on when those quotes went viral. Just saying, just I, I don't know. I felt like it was all so unnecessary. I was very much just telling people like, just wait till the show comes out and watch it and then make your opinion then, you know, form your opinion then, but don't judge something just based on what people are saying about it or just like these clickbaity quotes that are coming out. And then you watch the show and for me personally, I thought they nailed Sokka's character. They did a great job. Again, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Please feel free to let me know down in the comments what you thought about what they did to Sokka's character and how they approached his character. But he does go on after that. He says, what I'd also say to this subject in general, I know it's a little bit off topic, but I feel like the first season of the animated show is so good, but it's hopping around a lot. We're going on little side missions here and there because we're trying to get to the Northern Water Tribe and it really finds its voice in seasons two and three. And now... You're speaking my language. It's like, okay, we know what the show is. We know what we're going after. We know what the plot points are. We have Toph now, we have the Aang gang, we have a mission, we've got to save the world. I think that our show also has that opportunity in live action. We've gotten so much constructive criticism, which is why we all want to make the show as good as possible. Still, not just for season one, but season two and three. I think we really have that opportunity now as well to find our voice in season two and three. And this more than anything else in this article is what has me so excited. In a couple of my other videos, I've been talking about how I hope that they take the criticism that people give them, the honest and real criticism that people give them, and they run with it and they actually use that to better the show, to better season two and three. I hope they use that to their advantage and hearing him say that personally, like he's involved in this cast and crew, he's involved in this community that's bringing this thing to life. So clearly that's a discussion that's taking place and there are going to be efforts made to really just listen to what people are saying and listen
listen to what people want out of this live action series because I think a lot of us can agree that the show was pretty good. I mean, you might not have loved the show, but at least saying it's good isn't like crazy or radical, you know what I mean? Obviously, it was a massive success on Netflix. Some of the numbers that have come out specifically about like the first couple weeks of viewership have been insane. I'm not sure if people have been re-watching the show, maybe as much as Netflix is hoping. And again, that's something that they can focus on. When it comes to season two and three of the original series, like those are what really keep you coming back. Ian Owsley made a great point about how season one really is just jumping around. It's setting this whole world up. You're getting a feel for everything, but season two and three are going to be an opportunity to really dive into these characters, add so much more depth into the world. And it's an opportunity to really set in stone that this is a show that people should be tuning into and a show that'll hook people and keep them coming back. Like that should be their intent now moving forward. You got to just make season two and season three as good as possible while honoring the original series, but also doing what you did well in season one, making those changes where you see fit and continuing to take those risks. Because I I don't know, I mean, I really felt like they did a great job in season one at those risks. The stuff with Ko, the face stealer, like I really enjoyed that. I love the change to Gyatso and emphasizing that relationship between him and Aang, like all that stuff worked for me. And when I watched the first season, that's what I wanted even even more of. So I'm very much looking forward to the second season and third season if they continue to build off of that kind of stuff. But there was another question within this article that I found interesting, just his answer. It's kind of how they ended the article, but they asked him, what are your hopes for deepening your portrayal of Sokka? Anything you're excited to explore in seasons two and three? And he said, I think that he evolves through his sense of responsibility. He evolves through his relationship with his sister a lot. The reason this question is hard to answer is because I don't have the scripts yet, which helps me guide where that growth will come from. I'm kind of a psycho about trying to make the performance not one noted, even in one episode or one part of a season. I had a whole serial killer wall, wait, what? Theories of all like, okay, this season he's going through this and the reason it changes here is because, and then once you do all of that work, you can throw it all away once you get on set and you kind of have a sense of purpose of why. So I think I'm going to find out more of those specifics. I will find out more about that when I get those scripts, hopefully soon. And we're all very much hoping that those scripts are out soon too. But the thing that I wanted to emphasize a little bit here is just him talking about Sokka and Katara. I will say out of all of season one, just some of the character work that was missing was Katara and Sokka, as well as Aang and Katara, Sokka and Momo, and Aang and Appa. Like those are a, a few of the relationships that are very key to this story that I felt like there just wasn't enough time spent there. Like Aang and Katara's relationship is so heavily hinted throughout the entire series. And there was a a little bit of their relationship blooming, I guess, towards the tail end of season one here with Katara talking Aang down as the ocean spirit. Like that was a really big moment, but it didn't feel like the beginnings of love, if you guys know what I mean. Obviously, these are just children. So I, I get that it's hard to portray that kind of stuff in this first season, but I, I am looking for more of that in season two. Like I want to see those two characters come together because this is a future husband and wife. Like these two end up getting together and it is so powerful in the original original series, how that happens, as well as Katara and Sokka, you know, I was rewatching episode one the other day and they did a good job of when Katara and Sokka are rowing in the boat and they're having that discussion. Like there's a lot of solid dialogue between the brother and sister there. There's a lot of character building in that moment. But after that point early on in the season, there's not as much as you would want. You have the cave of two lovers and you have that episode, you have some solid exposition, but still it just feels like you get to the end of the season and you see Katara and Sokka together, you know that they're brother and sister, but for whatever reason, it lacks a little bit of emotion for me. Like Zuko and Iroh in this first season, nailed it. I, I can see everything there. It all feels like Uncle Iroh and Zuko, and you're already getting just the, the essence of where that's all going to go and how emotional that's going to get. So all I'm saying is I'm very much hoping that they dive into more of these relationships so that they can make it a little bit more powerful and emotional down the line, because you have to set things up. You have to build things for them to actually pay off in the end. And I know this might sound cheesy, and I, I doubt many people disagree with me on this, but, you know, maybe they could. Like, people can understand why they wouldn't pay more attention to Momo and Appa and give them that screen time. But for me as a fan, that is important. Like, I want to see 
Sokka and Momo having moments. I want to see Momo having a presence. I want to see moments with Appa. I want to see people connect with him because they are two big characters in this show. They deserve so much screen time. And you get to an episode like Appa's Lost Days, like it's not going to hit as hard if they did something like that in season two as of right now. It's not going to hit as hard as it would if you started really building that character up. And I don't know, Appa and Momo, I'm so biased because like <laughs> Appa and Momo are my amazing imaginary best friends in my life like they're always with me I love Appa and Momo so much but a lot of that relationship stuff just going back to the criticism and fixing what people have kind of said I think that there's a lot in the writing side of this show that can be worked on and I'm very much hoping that it all just it comes together they listen to the fans they listen to the feedback they take that and they capitalize on it and they just give us some freaking excellent season two and three because whatever you thought about season one think about the original series and what you think about season one there and then think about what you think about season two and three there's a lot riding on both these seasons specifically season two like if they can knock season two out of the park if they can knock this empire strikes back of seasons out of the park i think that we're going to be in good shape heading into season three so fingers crossed for that but like i said this is a really long article it's specifically just with ian ausling he's talking about his audition process talking about his relationship with dallas lou there's a lot of really fun stuff in here there's also some kiyoshi stuff that he talks about so i definitely suggest going and checking it out. It's a really fun read. This is the stuff that I took from it, but I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on the entire article down in the comments below. Also, what do you guys think about all of these topics that I discussed today? What are your thoughts on the changes that they made to Sokka's character, the changes that they made to season one in this live action, as well as what do you think is coming in season two and three, and what do you think that they can improve on from season one heading into season two and three? I need you guys to let me know all of that down in the comments right now. I'd very much appreciate it. I read every single comment that comes in and yeah, seeing your guys comments always just makes my day. Also, my friends, if you're not subscribed already, do me a favor and click subscribe. I make a ton of content here on the channel. If you like Avatar The Last Airbender or Star Wars, Marvel, you name it, I'm into it. I'm a very big nerd. I'm trying to get to 15,000 subscribers right now. That is my goal. So I very much appreciate your help in achieving that. And then if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button right now. You can follow me on X at Jones Vibes Only and don't don't forget to keep up the good vibes, guys. But guys, I'm calling it right now. I think they're going to change things up, and Appa and Momo are going to be the main characters of season two and three. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs>